My name is Mike Brace. I'm just coming up to my 70th birthday in June. Uh, I've been blind since the age of 10 following a fireworks accident. Um, I then worked initially as a shorthand typist, then went on to become a social worker and social work manager um, in children's services, then moved on to set up and run Vision 2020 that is now Vision UK. And since retiring in 2000, uh, and 12, I've been involved in doing after dinner speaking and general stuff around challenging attitudes to disability and sight loss in particular. Tell me how you go about challenging those attitudes and what attitudes you'd like to change. I think uh, I tend to use humour on one level to get people in a fairly safe environment, i.e. the, the, the uh, um, privacy of their own minds in terms of sitting there and thinking, oh gosh, that would have been me that would have said that or me that would have um, made the faux pas, but getting them to laugh with me at their uh, indiscretion, but only they know that they've done it. The sort of things like, you know, do you have a blind dog? Uh, to which I then say, well, I, you know, if I had a blind dog, I'd have to have another dog to show it where to go or where they then... Um, you know, do a whole range of things where basically you, you're getting them to laugh at that situation. And so I, I, I do a bit of that, a bit of um, some of the situations that I've been into um, that, uh, you know, you would n normally credit that basically I've had to laugh. Otherwise, I probably would have cried uh, at the embarrassment of the situation. <laughs> and if I know you, um, and I remember you from way back when, you're a man who gets about the place a fair bit. Yes, I mean, it's been really interesting with the current issues. I said to my wife, I, I, you know, having been retired, I then um, gave her my diary for 2020 at the beginning of January and had something like 127 appointments already booked in. <laughs> Um, most of which, of course, now have just been cancelled. But uh, yes, b pretty busy, pretty pretty active, um, still getting to the gym three times a week, um, travelling a fair bit to, to do the talking, and then on two or three charitable committees or um, travel committees. Do you travel independently generally on public transport, with, just you know, with your guide dog? Yes, um, I used a cane for 50 years, never said I would get a guide dog. And then for the last 10, I've been using my, my first guide dog, Izzy, and and now my, my latest one, King. Um, but I used to travel everywhere abroad and uh, in the UK just using a stick. And now, obviously, using the dog uh, differences. But, but basically, it's keeping me quicker and slicker at my advancing years. So... You mentioned earlier about the number of appointments that were in your diary. I think you had 127 for this yeah. year, and that was in January. Um, yeah. So talk me through a typical Mike Brace week. What would it have been like until the lockdown? Um, right. I would, Sunday would have been gym in the afternoon. I go, it's a mile and a half walk each way to the gym. I then do an hour's exercise on three different apparatus uh, and obviously walk back. Monday, I may well have had a meeting up at St. James's, so it would have been out of my house, up onto the tube, walking down from St. James's to the Department of Transport headquarters for a meeting. Tuesday probably would have been the gym again. Wednesday probably would have been a local talk to a Probus or to a Rotary or to a 41 Club or Round Table. Thursday would have then been, um, uh, I'm a member of a couple of clubs, so I, I, I went to the 41 Club on the Thursday evening. Uh, Friday might have then been the gym again with perhaps the theatre in the evening locally, uh, and then it all starts again. I may have had a day off on Saturday to uh, not do very much. I imagine then the lockdown that we're all subject to is a bit of a nightmare or at least very much a change of life for you. Very much so. It's still fairly early days, but I do find myself uh, playing games more than I, I did before. I've got a few uh, games that I've downloaded onto the computer that to keep me amused. I've 
done some creative writing in the past. I've written two books, largely autobiographical. So it's now given me some time now to think about perhaps writing uh, something new, either another book or, or some, 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 I don't know, just something that I can um, put my brain to. So that keeps me out. And then I've been out in the garden, which I'm not a gardener, but uh, that's been neglected. And so we're going out to do that. And then everyone else has got stuff to clear as we have. So my garage is pretty chocker of, I've, I've exited loads and loads of old. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to electronic stuff. And I've just found myself, I think I've got 11 mobile phones that I'm just about to bin and uh, um, various other things from uh, way, way back in terms of braille equipment and stuff like that. So I've been sifting through those as well. Looking at the lockdown and things that people are doing, you've mentioned quite a lot of things that, that you're doing um, at the moment to keep yourself occupied. Have you gone out so far? I've limited me going out other than to walk the dog. Um, one of the big binds we've got is shopping. We did go to our local supermarket, which is fairly close to us, but virtually hasn't got much stuff in there. And what we were finding is that being blind is very difficult to do this social distances. So you were getting potentially people very cross, you know, that you were less than two metres from, from them. You couldn't see anything on the shelves and you were people were reluctant to come and help you because they would then have to stand fairly close and uh, um and so i thought well i'll we're, we're regular shoppers at one of the big uh, retailers and we used to get our online delivery every week but i've then gone back on there and trying battling away on the website to then now book a a, a reorder online and there's no dates available to I think the 16th of April and then not even then so I can't get a delivery even three weeks or hence I can't get through on the phone to people so that's really frustrating and it's potentially going to force us out to have to go into the local supermarket and risk all the all the issues that we're being warned not to risk. Thinking of social distancing first, I mean, uh, my feeling is, first of all, it cuts both ways. I think sighted people have got more of a responsibility to, to avoid us and we have to avoid them, quite frankly. But uh, uh, th that aside, how do you feel about being guided um, if, say, somebody offers their elbow or, or their shoulder, you know, in the current climate? Well, it's funny you should say that because I, 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 it's almost instinctive not to really think about it. I, I had exactly that, even with the guide dog, I, I'm tending not to then have that much contact. And I walked down a road as part of my route and the road was blocked off and they were digging pavements up and everything else. And the workman was there and he said, I'll guide you round. And I said, can I take your arm? And I did you know, holding his elbow probably where he was just sneezed into. And uh, and it was almost instinctive. I didn't suddenly think, oh, no, I can't possibly touch him or whatever. I just thought, well, to get around this, I'm going to need to be steered. So it was just really strange. And things like, you know, uh, cleaning stuff that are being delivered, you know, you're suddenly thinking, well, actually, you don't know who's touched whatever it is being posted through the letterbox or whatever. So I suddenly find myself... Uh, um, wiping anything down that can't, and then go and wash my hands again after that. Are neighbours being quite helpful? Are you finding the local community are stepping in to, at least to an extent? Yes, yeah. We have had three neighbours that have knocked and basically said, you know, if there is anything you need to do, some of them are, have got families and therefore go to, you know, one of the big um, uh, mega markets and stuff to to buy stuff at supermarkets so they they they've got stocks it's silly things like we ran out of bread so we now haven't got the flour to make bread because basically there's no nothing in the shops you know it's just silly things like that so you would think of an alternative but um and and obviously we will get more and more and more anxious because once you've got the mentality that you're not going to mix with other people and you are going to stay in, then suddenly being forced to then go out into the world to into an environment where 
you know, everything on the news is saying that there's hundreds now in your local area. I mean, we, you know, we've getting the news of how many patients in our local hospital and from our area already. So that, that that's on one level information, but on the other level, obviously raises your anxieties. I remember you from the cricket and uh, my one recollection in particular is that you're quite a gregarious kind of guy. How are you coping with not meeting up with other people? Well, I, I, funny enough, I've started to use Facebook. I, I'm not particularly a social media, but linking in with that. Um, I've got a good email linkage and obviously the phone now. Two or three people have phoned and we're phoning other people. The other thing which is, is really probably going to be quite a bit for me now to, to utilise, We, my wife and I run a, um, our local sight loss charity and just before the lockdown, we had four or five referrals of people that were just newly referred, but fairly isolated now. And so we're going to start to look at what we can do to provide some sort of phone linkage service for them. Uh, many of them are newly blind and really haven't got a clue what to do. We're looking at books. I've, I've a big advocator of one or two of the technical solutions and, uh, you know, saying really, I'm sure you could still buy one of these, which will allow you to download uh, books from, from the RNIB, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and because if the postal service then starts to stop with, the, you know, the um, either the USB sticks or the CDs, then basically the, their access to even basic information is going to be more and more limited. Now, as a married person yourself, would you say you're not feeling quite as isolated as you would do if you lived on your own? Yeah, oh, no, definitely. I think my wife would say it means that we've had to talk to each other because with me being out, quite a lot suddenly it's more the other way around now that we're suddenly um, in, in each other's company and looking for things that we can do together as opposed to the stuff that we've always done then apart you were saying now that you run a local charity for visually impaired people yeah. are you picking up concerns from your members from your service users uh, in relation to being isolated and how to deal with that Yes, I mean, very similar issues. If I go out, um, I don't want to get too close to someone, uh, potentially getting angry reactions because uh, they've got partial sight, so they don't look as though they've got a sight loss. And people are saying, well, why are you a metre from me instead of two and things like that? So the, the potential for people to get angry because they don't understand that someone isn't willfully um, encroaching in their space. It's the fact that they don't see the space to to encroach into. Um, again, similar things that I've got that where they're on their own, trying to get things like deliveries, and and it, that will potentially get worse because if the family member then does get the virus, then the life support system is going to go out the window because that's the person that's been. Uh, providing them with food and, uh, and and all the bits that go with it. What are you advising your members to do more generally in terms of surviving the virus and uh, keeping themselves busy and not getting too stir crazy? I think to try and be as active as you can, and, and we've been looking at, at just advising people, you know, if you are able just to do some basic movements, you can do chair aerobics, you can do you know, get the music on, start dancing and stuff like that. All right, you may look a bit of an idiot dancing around on your own, but, you know, it's actually keeping your levels of fitness. So if the virus, um, uh, you know, God forbid, does uh, strike home, that you're, you're fitter and your, your ability to deal with it is going to be enhanced because you've got a level of, of lung capacity or fitness that, that's higher than it would have been. Um, so things like that. Uh, keeping your brain active. So um, uh, one of the groups that I, one of the things I use is the Spoonbill Games um, from Australia. And I've got about 30 of those on there. And uh, and they're, they're very good challenges from word games to number games to dominoes to um, anagrams or whatever. So again, just having more and more of that to, to keep your brain active. And looking at yourself, you know, um, we could be in this lockdown situation for what six nine twelve weeks are you confident that you personally will be okay you'll be able to survive my thoughts at the moment was yes i can't imagine why not 
But if suddenly food starts to become an issue, if the anxiety level goes up about the isolation, if I or my partner then go down with the virus and uh, and that will then change the situation quite significantly, then again, how, you know, how would we deal with the situation then?